next video. In the previous video, we studied about the separation of mixtures. In this video, we will study the types of pure substances. So far, we have studied substances and mixtures. But do you know that we can classify substances according to their chemical composition into elements or compounds? Let us first learn about elements. Do you know Robert Boyle was the first scientist in the world who first used the word element in the year 1661. Antoine Laurent Lavoisier 1743-94, a French chemist, was the first to establish an experimentally useful definition of an element. According to him, element is the basic form of matter that cannot be divided into other simple substances by chemical reaction. Elements can generally be classified into metals, non-metals and metalloids. Let us first learn about some properties of metals. 1. They have a luster, shine. 2. Their color is silvery gray or golden yellow. 3. They are conductors of heat and electricity. 4. They are ductile and can be drawn into wires. 5. They are malleable and can be hammered into thin sheets. 6. They are sonorous, make a ringing sound when hit. Now you may be thinking, what can be the examples of a metal with so many properties? Gold, silver, copper, iron, sodium, potassium, etc. are examples of metals. And do you know an interesting thing? Mercury is a metal that remains liquid at room temperature. Let us now look at some properties of non-metals. 1. They display a variety of colors. 2. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity. 3. Unlike metals, these are non-lustrous except iodine. 4. They are not sonorous. 5. They are not malleable. Can you think of some examples of these? Examples of non-metals are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, bromine, etc. And finally, metalloids are substances whose properties resemble both metal and solid non-metals. They are lustrous like metals. They are semiconductors of electricity. They are not tensile or malleable. Boron, silicon, germanium, etc. are examples of metalloids. Friends, do you know what we get when two or more elements combine? Let us understand this by an activity. Take 50 grams of iron powder and 3 grams of sulfur in two separate ceramic cups. Now mix iron powder and sulfur powder in the first bowl. And in the second bowl, mix iron powder and sulfur powder. Heat the mixture until it becomes red at high heat. Now remove the flame and allow the mixture to cool. Are the materials obtained in both cups similar in appearance? The gas obtained in a cup 1 is hydrogen. It is colorless, odorless and flammable. While the gas obtained in cup 2 
is hydrogen sulfide. It is colorless gas and smells like rotten eggs. Now check the magnetic properties in both cups. Bring a magnet near the material. Check if the material is attracted to the magnet. What do you see? The material obtained in cup 1 has magnetic properties, while the material obtained in cup 2 does not have magnetic properties. Although initially the given substances were similar, the materials obtained in both the cups showed different properties. Why did this happen? This happened because the action done in cup 1 resulted in the physical change of the substances, while the action in the cup 2 resulted in chemical changes in the substances. Material obtained in the cup 1 are two substances, a mixture of iron and sulphur. The properties of the mixture are similar to those two elements. The material obtained in cup 2 is a compound, whose properties are completely different compared to combining elements. In this table, you can see the difference between a mixture and a compound. Friends, today we have studied the types of pure substances.